one of the things that needs replacement on the J is the roof rail moldings. And pretty well lost all flexibility. So here's a, a new one from Query. They come in a set. I've had it up here on the top, letting it uh, get some heat. And we'll see about install. On this window lace, all you have to do is just pull the old stuff out and the new stuff goes in without any glue. Uh, the only thing you want to do is catch this angle piece here because that you know, will determine your fore and aft and then just run her up. Not on our list of things to do today, but we're going to do it, try it anyway. This is the first test fire of the J. This is the car that you just don't know anything about. It was the Discovery car. And we, we're at the point now where it's we've got a fuel tank down there. And we're just going to see how well it runs. Got the back end jacked up just to keep any kind of load off the transmission. Yeah. More discovery. This is the car where I think I replaced the short ramps with dual fours. I have no idea what this engine is and what cam it's in. So crank and learn. Fired right off. Oil pressure light immediately went off. It's charging. It runs a lot better than I thought it would. I'm not sure about this smoking. And you know, that squeal. Well, we're just going to we'll get the alternator rebuilt. See if that takes care of the squeal. Thinking about working on the rear carpet for the J. I got to figure out where those four pieces go. But there's the cutout for the console. So this must be the front edge. Ah. Those are the holes for the seat belts. And I'm going to try to peel this up and put it in the car. This is the upper section of the J interior. This is that new kit from Legendary. And you have to install that chrome, we'll call it a radio panel that's up on the top. <coughs> I got a pair of easy clamps and that allowed me to get it depressed all the way in. And there's one, two, three, four. I used what? Number 10, one inch. And they bit and they spun in. And that'll work out just fine. Legendary also supplied a new rear cardboard. So quick and easy. And somebody had worked on this car before. And see this scratch is up there. That's from these two screws. The heads protrude just a little bit. 
So I will cover the area with that cloth and protect so that I don't add any new scratches. And there you go. Top section, rear seat installed. No issues. So there's the rear jute all installed. I had those four pieces. I wasn't sure where they went, but once I uh, saw the uh, tails for the transmission hump, so uh, there. I'm not sure they're all that necessary, but that's got the rear jute, so I'm ready to wear a test fit on the rear carpet. So I'm laying in the back carpet and trying to find the well with the back section. Which is pretty much there. And then I end up with a gap here. So I need to go get the new front carpet and see how far it comes back this way. Also, the console has a cutout it needs right about there in order for it to, to mate. And you, so, so first let's address the fore and aft issue. Now I don't have the front carpet far enough forward yet by about this much. But you can see I've got a huge amount of overlap here. So we don't have to be worried about getting the back carpet back so far that we end up with a gap. It ain't never gonna happen. So I'll work now on getting the back carpet secured in. Uh, it turns out the uh, booster Brake booster is not good on this car. Uh, I got one pump of the pedal and then I didn't get anything but a hard pedal. And we disconnected the vacuum from the engine and the engine ran much better. Those two things there say bad diaphragm in the booster. Plus we just put a hose on the booster and blew through it and you could hear air. So, got another booster sent out to Booster Dewey. And now we're spending some time on our old friend the H. Uh, the executive vice president is in the back seat. He is polishing the rear window. These doggone things fog up even if you store them indoors and we use uh, Novus and it comes back pretty quick. Uh, access for the inside is a little difficult which may explain why he's doing it and I'm not. Didn't use this car at all last year so we're Checking it through, and I don't remember if I have dot three or silicone in here. So well, there's an easy way to test. So just get yourself a siphon. This is actually a turkey baster and a, a clear water bottle. We'll take a sample out of here, stick it in the water bottle. So, there's the fluid in the water bottle. 
Now we'll go get a little bit of water and then we will shake it. If it is dot three and four, the water will be absorbed by the fluid. If it's dot five, you'll just see floaty bubbles. So there's the water in there. No floaty bubbles. That means it's dot three four. One of the things on my notes is that the electroluminescent is not good in this car. Well, now there's the 12 volt transmission light. Yeah, look. You can barely see it. That tells me that the power pack is probably failing or Yes, pretty close. So we'll put that on the list of things to fix. While well, we're here, let's see if the radio lights up. It is very dim. And so is the clock. So, yep, she's the power pack. There's the power pack out of the H. up above the parking brake held on by two screws held on by two screws five sixteenths don't lose those little screws so we've replaced the power pack let's see See what the dash lights. Well, there you go. The headlight switch is scratchy, but yeah. Now you are. Now you are getting. Okay, cross it off the list. <laughs> 